Everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. The Camry is back for the recommended repairs, the one with the EGR problem. Here are the parts that we're going to install. First, the EGR solenoid. Might as well just check the resistance, make sure it's good. I've seen ones that are not good out of the box. 34 ohms, you can make sure it clicks. Uh, other things for the oil leaks, on the oil pump side, we have the actual O-ring, the back of the oil pump, and also the shaft seal for the oil pump. We'll put that on together with a brand new timing belt. And the second oil leak is coming from the cam plug, which is over here by the throttle body. Kind of hard to see right down there, so we'll have to extract that guy and put the new one in. And what else? Oh, oil change, transmission fluid flush. That should be pretty much it. So let's get to work. I'll just record some highlights since people requested, you know, hey, videotape the repairs. So we'll just do the, uh, the, fun, the fun parts and uh, hopefully enjoy the video. Let's start with the EGR solenoid. I'm just going to hook it up to the battery, make sure it clicks. And remember, when it's not energized, the EGR system is on, so we should only have airflow through here and out to the EGR valve, so just make sure that's true. Yep, and when you energize it, we should only have flow from here to the filter. So this should be blocked off. Indeed it is. And if you blow on the second port, yep, comes out of the filter. Perfect. It works. ASIN. So this guy should outlast the car. Hopefully, you never know, it's a Toyota. Uh, let's pop it in. Alright, with the new EGR solenoid in, I want to do the bi-directional test and see what a known good system does. So, first let's clear the codes out. Check engine light's still on, you know, didn't run the self-test. So, clear the codes out. All right, success. Display codes. It's a little slow. Come on, snap on. And these older Toyotas, it's kind of takes its time. All right, no current codes, no history codes, no pending codes. Awesome. So now let's do actuator tests, EGR system on off. Continue. Raise engine speed to 2500 RPM. When EGR system is activated, expect to see fuel trim adjustment compensate for EGR. So 20. I'm going to try to keep the throttle steady here. Right about there. Continue. Do custom. Do RPM. Map. Short term. Long term. Oh, let's do bank one. Sensor one. Bank one. Sensor two. And EGR system. Okay. There we go. So I'll do short term and long term. And look at our map right there. So on.
Boom, look at that. And off. You can actually hear the engine change tone. Let it stabilize a little bit. Look at those fuel trims, beautiful, zero. Zero and zero. Do it on again. Look at that, minus 10, minus 11. Let's look what our happens to our O2 sensor off. Drops lean. Kind of a slow data refresh rate. And look at the fuel trims, it jumped up to 14. I like it. All right, so the oil leak on the driver's side of the engine is coming from this rubber cam plug right here. It is nasty. So, not too bad. Throttle body off, then this metal bracket holding the ignition coils. That kind of pivots out of the way. And what I'm going to do is take a drill and drill a small hole in the center of this plug and then we'll put a self-tapping screw in there and hopefully get this plug out. Here's the new one. It should be exactly exactly the same. So I'm gonna go for it. See if we can it should be pretty uh, pretty easy to drill. Should increase the speed of my drill. Okay, we're definitely through. We'll just enlarge this hole a little bit. Oh, come on, okay. This thing is completely, the rubber is caked and shot. So we're gonna clean up this mess in here. I don't want any shavings or garbage falling inside the engine. Now I'm not sure if Toyota, you know, used to have a distributor here or if the older, well I know the, the older Camrys from the early 90s had a distributor here, but now they just have waste spark you know, on this model year, and even the camshaft is splined for a distributor. You can see in there, so that's pretty neat. They even have the hole here, so the head is the same. <laughs> they just said, hey, we don't need a distributor anymore. We'll just use... Um, Waste spark electronically controlled system, which I guess it's more reliable. The distributors and those things do seem to go, uh, and the igniters as well. Those can be tough to find replacements for. Uh, um, so the new plug. Made in Japan, cam plug, sweet. That's the original brand, N-O-K. So this guy, we can get a little motor oil from inside the engine, or <laughs> somewhere where it, it's been leaking. Just lubricate the outside of it. And then just uh, gently tap it in. It almost wants to go in on its own. Ooh, the claw hammer.
and it doesn't need to go in that far just enough to seal off the, the hole we'll just keep gently grabbing it in until it's, it looks like where the old one used to be I have to get this car done tonight because tomorrow I have a trip planned to Staten Island to visit Keith. It's been a while. Ah, that's, that's good enough. Yeah, good enough for our purposes. Perfect. Very happy with that. And we're not done here yet because this oil has been dripping for so long it ruined this coolant hose down here. It is completely swollen and those things can burst if they get oil contaminated. So we also have to replace the coolant hose. It goes from there to the heater core. All right, moving on to our coolant hose. Uh, this is a really neat tool that I rarely use, but it comes in really handy. It's a hose clamp remote, I don't know, release tool. And when you squeeze this, this guy squeezes via cable action and it locks so then you can undo your clamp style hose clamps. And for ones that are kind of buried like, oh, let's see if we can zoom you guys in here, like this one right here, all we need to do is There we go. Position this guy right over the clamp and then I'll just start squeezing. Make sure it catches the top and the bottom. And then boom. Locked in. Now we can easily slide our hose off of the pipe. Or semi easily. At least in theory, this thing is all oh, you know, oil contaminated. All right, we've got it broke free by hand. Slide it off, and coolant is going to shoot out of there, and hopefully make it into our catch pan. This tool is especially good for clamps like this right next to the firewall. No problems. Go like that and squeeze and lock. And the clamp just slides right off. There we go. So you can clearly see the difference of a good hose and a really bad hose. This thing is like completely toast it would have burst right here and left the owner stranded maybe even overheated the engine so that's why we're doing preventative maintenance before troubles happen so she'll have the best chance to get the Texas in back in one piece without any unnecessary repairs alright I got a brand new silicone 5 8 inch hose installed reused the original pinch clamps they're in great shape so this guy should also last a very long time. Silicone is a lot more resistant to oil than rubber, so hopefully this will stay clean and oil free, but you know, might as well use the good stuff. Last thing I want to do is clean up this connection here. It looks like it's been seeping a little bit since the coolant is out anyways. Take off the upper radiator hose, clean this up, and reattach that. Alright, let's uh, get this hose off using the same tool. It is it's very, very handy once you get used to it. The fact that it locks means you can kind of 
slide your clamps around. Keith says he already has case studies upon case studies scheduled and I'm only going to be there for a day. So it's going to be uh, very hectic but I'm sure it'll be extremely fun and enjoyable and satisfying as usual. Hopefully you have some, there's always good video material down there. This is uh, no question about that. All right, finally got that off. Here's the hose. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that garbage. <laughs> That's not what an outlet's supposed to look like. It's green crusties to the max. Let's uh, plug that hole and clean around with some little sandpaper. You gotta say, scraping off the green crusties, quite satisfying. So just gonna go through with the little pry bar, get that sucker all cleaned down to the bare metal. I can't believe how much crust there is in this thing. And we'll do the same for the inside of the hose. That also looks a little crusty and not sealing well. And once the surface is good, we can reattach our hose and it shouldn't leak. Alright, sweet. The water outlet is nice and clean. And then we're going to install our clamp back on here. Now slip it on here. And release. So you can still move it by hand, which I don't like. That might have been the reason for the leak to begin with. So what we can do is reposition this clamp and put on an extra worm style hose clamp to help out. And then put our worm style clamp on here. Like so. Kind of double it up. Can't hurt, right? Put it right about there. And we can snug it down. Now that hose is not going anywhere. No leaks. <laughs> so we're pretty much done on this side. Let's go move on to the timing belt. Back to the Toyota Camry. I'm on the final repairs here. We've got the timing belt cover off. Piece of cake. And we want to see if this loose timing belt is causing a noise. Now if it was hitting the cover, the noise should go away, right? So let's fire it up, rev it up, and see where the noise is coming from. Turn off all the accessories. There it is. That's what's causing our noise. <laughs> you see how the noise comes back when it when it does that? Cool. Loose belt. So it wasn't necessarily hitting the cover. But when the belt vibrates like that, it'll make noise. So we're just going to throw a new belt on here and also replace the gasket around the oil pump. You can see it's leaking right here and down. Uh, I won't touch the actual shaft seal of the water pump. That's dry. 
leave that alone and this car should be good to go. So first before taking off the old belt let's uh, get the engine to where the camshaft pulley there's a little mark that should be aligned and then on the crankshaft let's see if we can find a little picture oh right around here on the sprocket it should align with the mark on the oil pump body <clears throat> So, we're coming up, here's the little hole, and there's the little mark on the bearing housing. See those guys right there? So we need to go a little bit further, and we'll watch right here on the crankshaft. When those marks come up, They actually uh, already painted this. Whoever did the job last time, I believe that's right there. You can see the red paint. So those marks, that guy, and the little pointer up there should align. And at that point, our little circle should align with the. Uh, <coughs> mark over there. Just to be a hundred percent we can take a little pen, a white paint. I like to use white out. I haven't had good luck with paint markers. All we're gonna do is mark a little point on right on the back cover here where this little tip is so that way we'll definitely be right on next step loosen up this bolt release the tensioner and get off the belt alrighty so here we go that's loose it seems like the tensioner is almost at the end of the travel the cheap fix here would be just to slam it tension it and and uh, put it back. However, we're just putting on a new belt. So you can push this guy down, tighten up this bolt, fix it in position. There we go. And now our belt should be completely loose and free to come off of here. Piece of cake. <clears throat> Obviously we need to take off the crank pulley. And this car is from Florida so everything comes apart so nice and easy. It's amazing. There's our old belt. The Gates T138. Again, doesn't look terrible, but while we're in here, we might as well throw a new one on. They're like 40 bucks to the dealer. And last bit, let's pop off this oil pump. So this is the actual oil pump driven by a timing belt, so not a traditional layout, but the only thing that goes here is the seal behind the oil pump itself. By the way, the tensioner pulley, idler pulley, water pump, everything is still in great shape. We're not going to touch that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't put on the Gates, you know, Chinesium kits. I've seen that video. Uh, we're just doing the oil pump gasket down there. It's kind of tight in here. Get these bolts out, but I'll try to give you guys a shot. There's one. There's two. Oh, great. So I got the seven bolts out. Keep in mind, there are longer ones, five of these with the washer on them, and then two shorter ones. 
without the washer. You have to put them back in the right place. The shorter ones go here and up here where the thread is closer to you know the outside of the engine. So let's pop this guy off, get a catch pan ready, just in case we get a little residual leakage. This guy should. Should. Am I missing any bolts? I only see seven. Alright, we got we got oil leakage already, so it's coming. There we go. Definitely get a catch pan. <laughs> There's our gasket. And there is our oil pump. Look at that guy. That's pretty cool. We'll clean this mess up and we'll replace the gasket. So here's a new gasket. Installs on the actual engine block here in the groove. So make sure you orient it correctly. Uh, so either that way or that way. That looks that looks right right there. Make sure your rotor doesn't fall off. And just slam this thing back on there. Should be aligned. It's kind of it's a little tricky because it's eccentric. So <laughs> you have it in the right place before you stick it on there. Well, unfortunately, I have a feeling that someone has been here before. There's this old gasket has some kind of like crappy sealant on it, and if we look close, I don't know if this is an OEM gasket or not. Might be one of those dormant ones that only lasts like six months. The oil pump seal itself is national brand. Uh, it's not leaking so I'm going to leave that alone but it kind of irritates me when jobs are done you have to fix a problem but they're not done properly so the results just don't last. You still have to take the time and care to use the quality parts and be properly install everything. I mean I'm sure this is all done together, the timing belt, the uh, oil pump gasket, whatever. Oil pump's leaking, timing belt's loose. Uh, that's just, you know, kind of disappointing. Alrighty, last step here. New belt is on. All we need to do is loosen up the tensioner right here. And the spring should take up the slack. You just saw it move. <clears throat> and now, to make sure all of the slack is on the tension side, we can just spin the engine over a little bit by, uh, by the crank here. Or the other easier option is to put a wrench on the cam. <clears throat> and spin the cam backwards just a tad so now everything between the crank and the cam this is the tension side of the belt is tight and now the tensioner should have picked up all the slack you can see there's no more 
playing the belt. So we just need to tighten this guy down. And that is it. Beautiful. Our belt is now properly tensioned. You don't want it too tight. Too tight's not good either. If we push down here, see there's a little movement, but not nearly as much as there was before the belt replacement. So you can spin it on the engine over by hand a couple times, let the belt settle on all the pulleys, release the tensioner, tighten it, should be good to go. So new belt installed, tensioned, looks perfect. Let's fire it up. Make sure that noise is gone. See what it looks like. Ah, oh, it sounds better already. Let's rev it up. a lot better. Turn like a kitten. Beautiful. Awesome. New time to install, documented. So that's it. A lot of little problems. Oh man, what is this? <laughs> Get your hands dirty. But I uh, appreciate you all watching. Hope you enjoy the camera repairs. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye.